All right, guys, what's up? Welcome back. Today, let me just go ahead and close the trade chat. Today, uh, we're going to be doing something pretty chill. I'm just going to be doing some egg hunting, um, egg hatching, rather. So it's going to be a chill video. Unfortunately, nothing crazy. We will be doing some flipping in the meantime, but obviously, uh, today, as you can tell, I want to talk about uh, basically how do you decide what shiny to go for. Now, there's a few things as I move the some screens around. I think it's better if I put this here so I can see when the eggs hatch. There we go. So as you can tell, I did another bunch. Let me just preface by saying I did another bunch of uh, Beldum eggs. I went up to batch seven. Uh, I have these few left. I was supposed to finish off these eggs. Uh, actually, there should be more. Yeah, here, there, here, there. So there's a few more eggs or a few more Pokemon left. Uh, some things got like jumbled together or whatever. So uh, it's not the, uh, the cleanest look, but as you can tell, I'm hatching eggs. I hatched the first batch already. So far, no no luck. Um, I used the shiny charm. I'm on donator status. All the whole shebang. Uh, finished out about uh, set, like almost seven complete boxes, which is what? Like 420, so a little less. So probably like, what is this? 414. Pretty good for an egg run. Uh, for those of you who don't know, the average is probably like 360 to 380. Um, with Bill's strings, the new... The, new, the newest strings model, I guess, it's it's a lot faster to hatch them, so uh, yeah, wish me luck. It'd be cool if I got it live on camera here, but I'm not, I'm not really counting on it. Basically, I want to explain to you guys my thought process in choosing what shiny to go for. It's a little, it's a little not centered. There we go. So when it comes to shinies, essentially, it's very simple. I just go for a mix of what I think looks cool. Like, for instance, a Milotic looks sick, right? However, the... Uh, the, the means of catching it had this guy catch it. Okay, so he, he egg hatched for it. If you didn't want to egg hatch for it, although I do think it's not the, the worst idea uh, for a Phoebus, if you don't know, Phoebus is extremely difficult to get. It's only at Route 119 for one spot, one tile at a time in the Hoenn region while you fish for it. Fishing is already a crazy difficult hunt uh, because it just takes forever. It's like 200 something encounters per hour, where, whereas like five times hoarding is like four times that amount so it's it's already way slower uh yeah i don't know I, I just don't think that i would probably go for something like this fishing wise i would probably just go for it and on an egg which is i guess what this guy did so cool for this guy congrats to this guy but i would kind of match okay is an egg hunt worth it right for instance a skitty is an egg hunt uh if you take a look at skitty chancy however like are these pokemon really useful right a rare single encounter is probably a rare um not a rare hunt probably an egg hunt right that, that probably the case uh there's some exceptions where some people are gonna single encounter for a skitty but for the most part if you wanted a shiny skitty which i'm highly doubting is on the gtl let's take a look yeah there's no shiny skitty on the gtl but yeah why would you go for a shiny skitty if you could just go for a shiny charizard right don't people want Charizard much more? Charizard, Peak, not Pikachu. Uh, what's another rare one? I guess Beldum, right? Metagross. Why would you go for a shiny Skitty if you could go for a shiny Metagross, right? It's, it's insane. So that's kind of my thought process there. Like, okay, what shiny is most appealing to me personally, right? Like Dragonite doesn't really do it for me. Uh, that's not to say I'll never go for one. Char Chandelure, I would actually go for a Chandelure. The reason for this, it brings me to category number two. I would say useful shinies, right? Chandelure, as you can tell here, I got my own, <laughs> is a Pokemon with the ability. Um, where'd it go? I lost it. Uh, did I close it? Okay, I might have closed it out, but let me pop open the Chandelure again. Where'd it go? Here. So Chandelure is a Pokemon with the ability Flame Body, generally, right? So Flame Body will hatch eggs faster. So this whole process of just sitting here, you know, twiddling my thumbs while eggs hatch, at least I can have a cool shiny to go with that. Uh, there's a couple of Pokemon like that. Macargo, which... Is there one out here? There is one. Cool. My cargo is one of them, which is actually like, see, as you can tell here, flame body. It's actually a pretty cool shiny too. And it's not super hard to get. Yes, you can get Macargo or Slugma in the wild. Other than that, the fact that it's flame body, it's not the most useful thing in the world, but it is a cool looking shiny. I guess it's going for like 3.7 mil. Not that, you know, prices of certain shinies actually matter. It's not like you're going to sell your OT shiny. Come on now, let's, let's be real. But I think... You know, useful shinies. There's also um, shinies with the ability illuminate. So something like a Starmie, a Star U, right? Starmie would be cool. Okay, let's look at another batch of five. Did not hatch. Next, throw in the next batch. So like a Starmie, for instance, with the ability 
Illuminate will basically raise the likelihood of meeting wild Pokemon. So if you're single encountering, you can actually lead your party with a shiny Starmie. And shiny Starmie is not, not amazing. I, I do personally want one. I think Starmie is really cool, but Star U is also really sick. I think, honestly, I would probably lead my party with a Starmie. I would probably evolve it, but... Yeah, I don't know. I think Starmie's really cool. Um, this is just something I really, really want. Starting off at 17 million is kind of nuts for a single encounter, right? Um, it's a, it's actually a very common. If I'm not mistaken, Staryu is a very common <clears throat> in a couple places. Obviously, you can super ride, but also, I believe it's very common in the water. Yes, here in Unova. So the fact that it's in water saves you a good amount of encounters per um Per hour because super riding is what like 200 250 encounters an hour and then super unova or not unova but um like water or grass is probably around like 300 ish maybe a little more if you're if you're really um effective with it but that's that's the second category as to how i determine which shiny i want um there's there's a bunch of other things like personal favorites right some people just really like a shinx right it's not super useful you're not going to do much with it but it's it's cool to go for that's kind of where i'm at with my with my metagross which it looks like someone might have just bought oh no here it is so for instance a metagross right it's it's actually can be useful because i guess this is number three uh, Metagross can be used in PvP. If I go to PvP statistics, I don't really know exactly which one is it. Doubles? Yeah, doubles, I guess. Metagross is 56 or 30% uh, usage rate. Very high, right? Um, you could go for a Shiny Scizor, a Garchomp, a Dragonite, Tyranitar. Tyranitar would be kind of nice, right? Tyranitar, uh, a lot of people are digging to Shiny Tyranitar. And with the Larvitar spot now, it's actually not like impossible. I think of this list, I really think Superior is cool. Um, Gallade is cool. A Zapdos. Shiny Legendaries, you're probably not going to get. All right, let's just be honest here. Your chances of getting a Shiny Legendary are super, super slim. I wouldn't bank on it, okay? I wouldn't put a lot of money. I wouldn't invest a lot of time in this. I wouldn't bother with things like Legendary Lures or anything like that. Just, just don't bother, all right? Um, but other than that, yeah, these are kind of like the main ways that I personally like to go for Shinies and how I determine them. There's also this very useful website, uh... You just like search shiny Pokemon. It's like a database. I forget the exact name, but you could just Google it, search it. Um, and it tells you like what every single shiny out there looks like. So if you have like any inspirations, um, people say like jot things down in a notebook and then like just that way you always have something to hunt for or, or shunt for. I think Swablu is a really cool like easy hunt. I would categorize things into easy hunts, medium hunts, and hard hunts. Uh, easy hunts being five times hordes or maybe even three times hordes. Medium hunts would be something like a single encounter, a fishing hunt, uh, things like that. And then a hard hunt would be, you know, pretty much what I'm doing. Just egging, uh, fossil hunting, or uh, I guess single encountering like a rare or something like that. Or lure hunting, like a Charmander or something like that. That would be a rare hunt. And then I would, I would start off with a list of like 10, okay? It'll probably take you at least minimum a year to get all 10. So you don't have to worry about it, you know, too much. Uh, obviously, if you wanted to, you could sit down for a lot longer and, uh, you know, map out like every single shiny you want in this game so far and, and just keep grinding for that. But the thing is, you'll probably burn yourself out. The thing about shiny hunting, in my personal opinion, is like you're going to burn yourself out. There's a good amount of like, let's say it takes you 30 hours to buy, a, to, to not buy, to, to, to get a shiny, you know, whether it's a five times sword or whatever, a single encounter. It takes you 30 hours, right? Let's pop open the calculator. It takes you 30 hours. Let's say you play like three hours a day. That's already 10 days. 10 days you've dedicated straight to this game, right? Like 10 days you've dedicated three hours a day. That's a long time, all right? And I think with that, you're just going to burn yourself out. Imagine repeating yourself that, repeating that for 10 days. That's 100 for 10 shinies. That's 100 days, right? Can you go three months straight of simply just grinding for a shiny the entire time, right? Like, I don't think I can. I need to mix it up. I need to make money somehow. I need to do gym runs. I need to flip. There's a lot of things that I personally want to do. You know, there's personally like a couple of things that I have like goals for. I want to go for different shinies. Um, not every shiny is worth the same. Not every shiny is rare is the same rarity, as you guys know. A ditto is far, far rarer than a ponyta. All right. Obviously, this one has 231s, but 
yeah, there's, they're, they're not weighted the same, right? Having five Ponytas or five Raticates is not the same as having one Milotic, okay? Having 20 uh, Meowths is not the same as having three Coughings, right? So, yeah, just take that information with what you will. Hopefully, you, like, learn something from all my yapping today about shiny Pokemon. I just think I'm personally pretty ecstatic about shiny Pokemon, and, and this hunt is something that I have just been grinding for. For those of you who don't know... I've been grinding for shiny Beldum for the longest time, okay? it's It's been a long time since I've uh, just gone for it, since I've tried it. Um, yeah, I think there's not much else to say regarding that. Uh, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm hoping, I'm doing my best for the shiny. Ooh, looks like there's a Kangaskhan. All right, that's cool. Let's go for this Kangaskhan swarm. I think something cool about this series is that I can kind of break it up. You know, I, I'm not forced to just stay on one topic. It's kind of like, I kind of treat this series as like a day in the life kind of video um, where it's not, I don't need to, is this in rock tunnel? Where is this at? Oh, it is rock tunnel. Ah, uh, do I flash? I don't remember if I flash or not. I'm like low key tempted to buy like the ocarina, but ah, uh, it looks like I don't have flash. Um, does any of these guys have flash? Smeargle have flash? No. Oh, my chandelier has flash. Cool. Beautiful. Beautiful. Um, I'm low-key gonna super repel because I don't want to deal with any of that nonsense. Uh, it looks like people are fighting something around here. Is it gone? Or is it just down a level? Uh, I'm trying to find like where people are. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. This is not fun. I don't think I'm going the right way necessarily. I haven't seen a single Kangaskhan yet. It looks like there's people... Okay, it looks like there's people over there. So I'm probably getting close. Hopefully. I'm so lost. Has Rock Tunnel always been this dark, bro? <laughs> this, this is such a dark tunnel. Wow, I, I really haven't played the Kanto storyline in like forever, I guess. Oh, here we go. Alright, so the reason why I wanted to shiny check these is because Kangaskhan's not worth a lot, right? If we take a look, Kangaskhan... Yeah, really not worth a lot. Let's pop the encounter counter back up. Really not worth a lot, but I believe it's also a female-only species, if I remember correctly. But uh, the thing is, shiny Kangaskhan can be worth a ton. So let's go ahead and take a look. Nope. Um, anybody selling one? They are selling one. The thing is, you can barely tell it's different. But was this egg hatch? It was egg hatch. Wow. And this one, this one was in the wild. Cliff Cave, a secret shiny Kangaskhan. Wow, I would never sell a secret shiny, dude. That's crazy. That's another thing. For those of you guys who don't know what secret shinies are, basically, they're one, um, they are 16 times harder to find or luckier than a regular shiny. Imagine that. If, you, if you're someone who's been playing this game for like years and years, you've never gotten a shiny, and then you get a secret shiny, like imagine... How you must feel at that point. I should have just went through this rock entrance, rock tunnel entrance. That's bonehead mistake. But yeah. All right. No, uh, no shiny here. I, I guess we'll catch one just for the fun of it. I don't think it's it's going to be worth it. But for those of you who don't know, uh, swarms are definitely very useful to catch, right? They're, they're very useful. Usually, uh, okay, I don't want to say usually, but like you can potentially get some good stuff from swarms. Uh, even if it's not like a, as long as the bear, like the base Pokemon price is worth it. I would kind of go for it, you know, things like Gibble, things like, you know, obviously like the higher level swims, like a, like a Charmander or something like that. I would go for it, you know, at the very least, you're going to make some money. And <clears throat> best case is that you run into a shiny or you run into, you know, a cracked IV. You know, you don't know how many swarm Pokemon I've, I've gone for that ended up being like 31, like three times 31s or something like that. Like absolutely like kind of bonkers. Um... For the purposes of this video, while I while I yap, because uh, I do want to keep talking and kind of making this video, uh, I'm going to go ahead and shiny hunt a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I think I'm going to go for a, uh, a female female uh, Pokemon here. I'm going to go for uh, Minchino, and I think I'm going to ditch one of these in favor of a Baynet, wherever Baynet went. Here he goes. And so what I'm going to do right now is just do a bit of single encountering. So I'm going to go head on over to F Pattern Forest, um, which I think 
Actually, you know what? I don't really want to go to Pattern Forest. Let's go somewhere else. Let's go to... Let's just go to Hoenn, honestly. Another shiny I really want <laughs> is Trico. I guess I guess the thumbnail of this video probably gave it away a little bit. But Sceptile, yes, Trico is something that I really want. So I'm going to do like a few minutes here. Nothing too long as I as I yab. I got a couple things that I want to talk about just as, as far as like YouTube goes. <clears throat> I think YouTube's been really fun for me. Um, that's just something I'm going to put out there. Not everybody's on board with it, but I think I was really encouraged by the last week's video. Um, yeah, I was really encouraged at the fact that I kind of could just talk about whatever and and people seem to like it, right? People seem to just think it was it was cool to just hang and, and you know, leave comments and stuff like that. I talked a bit about like the NBA, which by the way, I'm, I'm completely over at this point. <laughs> you know, it is what it is. I'm not I'm not going to be salty or anything like that. I think the Celtics are a very corny team. They are not not the most fun to root for, but yeah, you know what it, it is what it is. Um, yeah, let's leave trade chat open just just cause. But uh, yeah, I think in this video there was something else I wanted to talk about. I actually want to talk about food. There's a trico. Um, I want to talk about food. Uh, as far as like breakfast goes, I really don't have a whole lot of time in the mornings to eat breakfast. But I'm very curious what you guys eat. I'm not even kidding. I I just. I don't eat breakfast. I think the last time I ate breakfast was like those Costco like uh, chocolate chip muffins or something like that. Or if I go out to like brunch or something. But I never like sit down and make a breakfast. I've never made like things like oatmeal or like scrambled eggs or bacon, toast, like a toast I, I probably did. But like I never make like a complete like nice looking breakfast. And I think it's just like, first off, I never really have the time. So it's like, what's the point? Um, and then second off, it's like, What's the point of making it look nice if you're just going to eat it in like five seconds anyway, right? So, I don't know. I, I think because I eat kind of faster than the average person, that's probably why that's my mindset. But I'm curious what you guys eat, you know? Are you guys just more so like the uh, uh, just cereal type, you know? Like just, just eat some cereal real quick and then call it a day? Or do you guys make like uh, really fancy things like avocado toast or like put bacon and tomatoes and stuff like that on it? Like really fancy. I guess it's healthy, you know? That's the good thing. And, and speaking of that, I, I guess just to keep myself accountable, I'm just going to share it with you guys. I do want to eat healthier. Um, obviously, I want to like look good and everything like that, lift weights and, and you know take long walks, things like that. Um, but like eating wise, I think is the best bet for me personally. Um, I think I'm actually going to move Smeargle up. Eating wise is going to be their best bet. I think it's it's really hard to like outwork a bad diet. Uh, I, I don't know if you guys heard of that or, or, you know, live by that or whatever, but, you know, I guess the mentality is that, like, if you gym five days a week and run, like, three miles a day, but then you eat, like, I don't know, 1,200 calories worth of Taco Bell, like, three times a week, it's like, what's the point? You know what I mean? Like, it's a way easier... Oh, there's another Trico. It's way easier to just like put down the bean burrito than to like do another two miles on the treadmill. You know what I mean? Like it's way easier. Not that a bean burrito is even two two um, two miles. It's probably like way more to be honest with you guys. Bean burritos are you know, very expensive. Not to excuse me, not to like bash Taco Bell or anything like that. I'm not saying I'm a Taco Bell hater. Okay, I'm actually a I'm actually a decently big fan of Taco Bell, but I think. Yeah, that's something I, I wanted to go for. And unfortunately, you know, with, when you're someone with limited free time and then you're kind of ch having to choose between hanging with friends, doing a YouTube channel and trying to like work out, it's it kind of gets difficult. We'll put it that way. OK, there's just not enough hours in the day sometimes. And, you know, sometimes uh, I won't be able to hang with friends. Sometimes I won't be able to make a video for the week. Um, and obviously, as you guys are on YouTube, you guys probably don't care that I don't you know, hang friends, you guys care if I don't make a video for the week. So it's hard. It's hard juggling, you know, both sides, both parties, but I am doing my best out here. So, you know, I just want to preface, I guess, by saying like, forgive me if there's a week where I just don't upload, you don't hear from me. I try to be upload, I mean, not upload, I try to be consistent as possible. I, I want to do at least a video a week, you know, um, I think this video, I was going to do a video Saturday and a, a video Wednesday, but I think until life settles down a little bit more, maybe, I think it's just going to be tough to do two videos a week still. So this video is probably going to be going up on Wednesday. I was going to put it up on, on Saturday or Sunday, but 
yeah, we're going to stick to Wednesday uploads for the time being. Let me know if there's anything you particularly want to see. If there's a specific topic. At the moment, I'm kind of just like talking about things that I find interesting, which is usually about shiny hunting or money making. I don't really care about berry farming, elite four runs, uh, gym runs even to a degree I don't really care about anymore. Uh, flipping, I, I kind of lost interest too. I think like sitting there flipping is not the most exciting use of your time especially when like the money you make is just gonna be dumped into something else anyway so yeah it's like important to make money it's not like flipping's like uh like something that like everyone like yeah i think flipping is something that people like need to do to a degree i'm gonna use one more expert lore but i don't think like you need to live on the gtl i don't think you need to like stay put on the gtl until you um what's it called, like, have something concrete or something, I, I don't know, you know, I just don't think it's, like, the end-all, be-all that a lot of people make it out to be, like, oh, to be a billionaire, you have to do this, you probably do, but I'm not saying you, you have to, I don't think there's, like, a, you know, you, you have to do this in order to, uh, to, to be successful or anything like that, there's other ways to make money, obviously, flipping is probably the fastest, but anyway, I'm, I'm not out here to be on a, a flipping rant or anything like that, I, I just personally, I lose interest in that. I think there's other things you could do with your time that's like more fun. Maybe it's the most efficient and the most effective way to make Pokeyen, but like, I don't know. It doesn't always have to be like that, right? Like I think, for instance, catching a rare starter and then going for, um, and, and like, not, not going, not flipping them, but like um, selling them on the GTO for like, you know, big money. Like for instance, a Mudkip, right? Like I think there was a Mudkip swarm the other day, but like just, finding which starter is in high demand at the moment and then going to catch those going to catch those selling the females for like three times the price people will buy you know especially if there's like a an egg breeder out there right now for said starter um that that's something that could be you know really cool and i think a lot of people would be digging that kind of content and speaking of content i think as far as pokemo goes it's really hard to make content that is not centered around tutorials or around like like only once a month like oh hey i got this shiny i think it's really hard to be consistent on this game and just talk when there's like think about it there's no like game updates ever there's what every like two months or something like that so unless you niche down into like pvp or like a tutorial channel or something like that it's really hard to just maintain an audience and maintain like a consistent stream of videos like yeah you can make tutorial videos and that's kind of what i did to, to you know kind of get myself started so that some people will come by and watch because nobody's going to come by and watch the guy play pokemon oh, what's so special about you right you have to offer something first that's why i try to offer you know a lot of tutorial videos i try to offer like guides and helpful things um but at a certain point there's only so much you can do again i'm not saying i'm done with tutorials but I don't want that to be like the bread and butter of the channel. One thing about that kind of channel is that people will come for the tutorial and leave right away. As soon as they get what you want, what they want from you, they just leave. They don't care to stay in your discord. They don't care to interact in the comment section. They don't care to subscribe for the next video, right? Many times they don't. Yes, there's a good amount of people who do, but think about it. One of my videos has, I think like 30,000, 30 something thousand uh, views. And I've got like what, 3,500 subscribers, right? That means a lot of people came by, clicked on it, got whatever they wanted and left. And that's fine. You know, like if I didn't offer them something that they really could use or really learn from, that's on me, right? But I think a lot of people, like I would rather have like 500 to 1000 people come for every single video of mine, enjoy me, enjoy my presence, enjoy my content, than every video get like 10K views and like two comments. That, that kind of thing isn't why I do YouTube cool you know you're getting views you're getting publicity but do people care about you right it, it, it's not enough to motivate me Ten thousand views on a video cool that's nice but i would rather see my comment section be filled i'd rather see people that i uh you know know support me and that i support them like friends i'd rather support or i'd rather like see like familiar names in the comment section every time even if it's like five or six familiar names every single time then you know one comment and 20,000 views that that's just not for me maybe that doesn't make sense to you guys at the end of the day if you want youtube to be a business if you want youtube to be uh you know your, your main source of income then you gotta do whatever you gotta do to to make it happen fortunately i'm not in that position right i don't need to do this every day or anything like that i don't need to make a living not that there's anything wrong with that but 
I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't, I don't need to do that. And so um, I'm lucky. I'm blessed to be where I'm at. Uh, and there's no shade of people who do YouTube every single day. Okay. I, I think that <laughs> bravo to you. I couldn't do it. Okay. It's just, it's, it's very taxing. I think people think streaming is like streaming and, and making videos every single day is like easy or something like that. Oh, you're just sitting there talking to a mic. You're just sitting there, uh, whatever. Like it's, it's not easy. Yeah, maybe you could do it for like a day, a week. Can you do it for a year? Can you do it for two years? You know, it's not the easiest thing in the world. You're going to run out of content ideas. You're going to get tired. There's days where you're not going to feel like talking to people. There's days where you're going to be annoyed and hey, you might, you know, bite someone's head off in in, the, in your chat and they may never come back, right? You got to be careful of that. Um, there's a lot of, it's not the easiest thing in the world. Yes, it's not the most difficult thing in the world. I'll admit to that, but I don't think it's the easiest thing. And speaking of streams, uh, a few team members have been asking me like, oh, are you going to come back to streaming and stuff like that? I think some people in my Discord too. I would love to. I don't have time. I'm really sorry. And the thing is, it sounds bad, but if I'm streaming, if I'm going to take the time to stream, I need to know that people will show up. I can't stream for an hour and then wait for people to show up. And then like after the first hour, people will start showing up and now we start chatting. I, it sounds bad. It sounds egotistical. It sounds like, you know, why am I wasting my time? But the thing is, at my current stage of life, every like hour means something. Okay, like, I can't waste an hour of my life. Um, and yeah, maybe that's egotistical. Maybe you think I'm wasting an hour right now recording this video. But um, I don't know, it, it is what it is. I, I'm just trying to say like, it's hard, okay? It, it's hard to stream right now. I would love to. It's not like, oh, I'm just sitting around playing all day, choosing not to stream. It's not like that, okay? I just want you guys to know. It's not like that. I really wish I could. I am a big fan of streaming. I think it's really, really cool interacting with you guys. Um, really cool interacting with the community. Fortunately, we're not really not getting anything of substance here, but yeah, I think at the end of this lore, I'm probably going to call it there. It's going to be close to like a half hour video, so... Yeah, man. I hope you enjoyed. Got about 19 steps left. I'm curious what you guys think about this game. What keeps you playing? What keeps you motivated, right? Is it the shiny hunting? Is it the money making? What is it exactly? I think money making to an extent is like necessary, but I don't think anybody's like obsessive over it. I think money making is needed for buying cosmetics that you want or buying shinies that you want or going for shinies that you want, like the means to acquire ditto boxes or, or, um, I don't know, whatever, like Lepa Berries or something like that. Like, I think you sh you money hunt or money, you make money <laughs> to get shinies, not, you know, just for the love of making money in this game. Because what's what are you going to do with all the money if you're just going to sit around with it, right? So that's where I'm at. I'm just going to sit here for the rest of, um, I'm just going to sit here for a while as I watch shows and stuff like that, but as I render this video, but yeah, that's it for this video, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Hopefully you liked it. Feel free to leave a like and subscribe if you did. I'd appreciate any support y'all can give. And uh, yeah, let me know what you guys want to see in the next video. I'll see you guys later. Peace, peace, and peace out.